Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Kakodash. I want to send double honors to my elders and apostles, that great millstone, that taught me the truth and that rule well. Peace and salutation as always to the hopeful elect doing this work in sincerity and in truth, where we were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Yakal Lamath with the Great Millstone Nebraska Camp coming back once again, Lord willing, to edify through the spirit of Hawakai Kodash, which enables us to teach this truth and to do this work. And, um, you know, this is this video um, is actually a remake of a video I did earlier while I was at work. You know, um, I feel like the platform is a little better, you know. So um, it shouldn't be that long of a video, but it's just going into the name, man. You know how you have, you know, and, and there, there's uh, different brothers and um, you know, elders and apostles that have went into this specific topic, you know, uh, revisiting this specific topic with Nate, saying once again that we don't have the name in this current, um, at this current time, you know, that we're gonna pretty much receive that name in the kingdom of heaven. That's essentially what Nate is saying when you watch the videos, all right? You know, um, and, to, and to further val uh, validate it, there was a brother uh, the brother Amawan Gabar up there in New York, whose page is GMS uh, Awakening. You know, um, he showed a clip, which I seen with my own two eyes, where Nate was saying that when he hears the name um, Yahweh or Yahweh Shai, he cringes. Okay, so um, I'm not I'm not gonna make this a long lesson. It's gonna be very quick, man. And it's, it's in the defense of the gospel, man, I uh, know uh, you out you people out there that are familiar with the scriptures. You know. Um, there are many accounts and there are many scriptures that let you know that we have the name. You know, there, there are certain situations where um, that we're not going to deal with in the kingdom. And it mentions uh, calling upon the name, you know, and this is specifically one that I, um, that I have for this lesson. Hey, this is spirit, man. I went straight to it. All right. So, hey, but Lord willing, this is edifying. You know, this is... Um, this is this is not an attack on Nate, but it's the it's for the defense of the gospel, man. You know that must be done, as it says in the book of Philippians. We must be in the defense of the gospel, okay? In the name of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, you know it, it's it's uh, worthy of defense, man. You know, not that the Most High needs us to do it because Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, he can, you know, he can take out take out all the people that blaspheme his name or that don't give his name uh, due reverence. You know the glory that's due unto it, man. All right, and the Book of Psalms says that give the glory unto Yahweh by Shemuel Shai that's due unto His name, roughly paraphrasing. Okay, so I'm gonna get into these scriptures, man. This is the Book of Psalms, chapter nine, and verse nine. And the point that I want to get is in ten. It says the Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in the times in times of trouble. Okay, and who is the oppressed people? We are the oppressed people, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Nate, you are a part of that. All right, we're Israelites. Though you have a certain platform, you know, and you're you're able to do um, greater things, you know, you you're still the oppressed people, man. At the end of the day, Esau Edom is the one that's running this shit, man. You know, running running America. Okay, of course he's doing it through the um, uh, by being ordained by Yahweh Shem Shai. Okay, the Most High says what in Job, it says what in Job nine and twenty four. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, right? You know, and that's specifically talking about the guilty one, uh, Rashad, okay, which is Esau Edom, the so-called white people today. You know, we are the oppressed people, man. The Israelites, we are the oppressed people, okay? It says the Lord will be a refuge for the uh, oppressed, um, a refuge in times of trouble, which right now we're in times of trouble, okay? We're like, like as I meant, as the scriptures mentioned, we're oppressed. You know, um, we're constantly, and our people are constantly being uh, ridiculed, being killed by um, Esau, Edom, okay? Being killed by each other. You know, you have all these different plagues and pestilences that are going on throughout the earth and the kingdom of heaven ain't gonna be none of that, man. Ain't gonna be none of that outside of the control of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh because when we meditate upon terror, there will be certain plagues that we may put on the heathens, okay? But overall, in the kingdom of heaven, as it says in uh, Second Ezra, the eighth chapter, it says that rest is allowed, plenteousness is made ready. Matter of fact, I want to get it, you know, just for edification, just to kind of, um, hey, it's called law, man. It says, um, Second Ezra chapter 8 and verse 52, it says, For unto you 
is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Plenteousness is made ready. A city is built, which is uh, New Jerusalem. That was spoken of in, in the book of Revelation where it says he, um, uh, the kingdom of heaven is going to come down, man. All right, because the kingdom of heaven is going to be upon earth. But guess what? It's going to be ruled in righteousness. Okay? <clears throat> it says, and rest is allowed, yea, perfect goodness and wisdom. Verse 53, the root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness and the moth is hid from you, and corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten, which hell is the grave, man. Sorrows are past, and in the end, it showed the end of uh, uh, showed the treasure of uh, immortality. It says sorrows are past, man. Does not it does not sorrow correlate with trouble? It does not uh, when, when you're uh, feeling sorrow, does not that trouble your heart? All right, does not that plague your mind? In the kingdom of heaven, you're not gonna have to worry about that because according to Ezekiel the 33rd chapter, it tells you that um the word of Yahweh Shai is going to be engrafted in us, man. Okay? We're not going to have to worry about um, uh, our oppressor, Esau Edom, coming into our land and, and, and you know, doing a, being a repeat offender as far as putting his hand on the apple of the, the, uh, the Heavenly Father's children. We're not going to have to worry about that. We're not going to have to worry about taxes. We're going to be able to let our kids run freely. Okay? You can't let your kids run freely in this this wicked kingdom where you got all types of pedophiles and freaks and drug addicts and all type of people that, that's troublesome man we're not gonna have to deal with that in the kingdom of heaven all right so we have the name now <clears throat> another point no another point is how are we supposed to beg or not beg how are we supposed to plead for mercy how are we supposed to ask for forgiveness who are we asking for forgiveness because it ain't christ okay it ain't jesus all right and you have um and it's another video that the brothers, um, multiple brothers and elders and apostles have went into as well, as far as the brother out in the Philippines, not the brother, but you know, uh, you have an Israelite out in the Philippines teaching the, the, the true name of Yahweh and the true name of Yahweh Shai. And letting, letting um, whomever he was teaching know that Jesus Christ is a pagan God, man. Okay? Which when you go into the word Christ, it does mean anointed, okay? But uh, in the form that Nate uses it, it's like, this is the name. This is what we're supposed to use. I-U-I-C. <laughs> Israelites united in Christ. Okay? You're not giving that that that, um, that glory unto the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? And with that, with that, you're going off. So going back into Psalms 9 and verse 10. I'll read 9 again just for, um, and I'm going to read it through. It says, the Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put thy trust in thee. For thou, Lord, Yahweh, has not forsaken them that seek thee, man. All right, it says, they, they that know thy name will put thy trust in thee. And we know thy, we know his name. Nate, you know his name. You know, I haven't personally seen the video myself, you know, but there are different brothers that I know that said they, they have personally, um, they personally learned the name from you when they were first um, coming into this truth, man. You know, which proves, man, that you were pushing that that true, holy, and powerful name. And, and <laughs> that's why we believe that you have the Judas purse. You know, that's why we believe you have the Judas purse, man. Okay? Man, the name is very important. You know, if, if that's the case, then, um, you know, the name of Israel wouldn't have no significance. You know, the Lord could just give salvation to anybody. Which he could, but he chose Israel specifically. He's very specific. Okay, he's very specific on his name. He's very specific on who he was going to grant salvation to. He's very, the Most High is very specific. He's very transparent. You know, so why shouldn't his name give, uh, um, get more glory, man? Why shouldn't his name receive more acknowledgement and honor, man? You know, we, here it is that we, you know, as, um, as regular people, we expect people to give us respect. And to call us by our proper name you know but here it is you have and, and this is not just nate man this is you know you, you're you're just you're you're a high level okay but there's there's many other people that don't give cre uh, credence to the most high's name but they want their name to be respected they don't want people to call them anything okay out of respect and out of respect you know the information that we've been given to understand the name of yahweh shimmy and to know what it means, 
You know, hey, we we give all all due respect, man. You know. So I got one more precept, and I want to close it out because I don't want to make this too long of a video. Because this is just for the defense of the gospel, man. At the end of the day, this is for the defense of the gospel. You know. So this is um. Matter of fact, I want to get Jeremiah. Jeremiah. The. 10 and 25. Mm. <laughs> it's a lot here. Just start off my video. Um, yeah, damn it, I just had it. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna get this in Isaiah. Alright, this is Isaiah six, uh, 64. Isaiah 64 and verse 6, and the point is in 7. It says, um, But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our unrighteousness are as filthy rags. And we fade, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that called upon thy name that stirreth himself up to take hold of thee. All right? There is none that called upon thy name that, that to take it up to hold of, uh, that called upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee, man. For thou hast hid thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquities, which proves what? That the name has always been around, man. Alright? The name has always been around. There's also a scripture in Hosea. The Lord said what? Um, he's going to call us Lord me for we are not his people. But now that we are his people and that he, he's, um, you know, he's showing, he's, he's revealing things unto us, man. As it says in Baruch. It says the things that are uh, pleasing unto the Most High made known unto us, made known unto Israel. The Negroes, the Latinos, and Native Americans. These things are made known unto us. The name. The laws, the statutes, and commandments, you know, so on and so forth. Go through the scriptures, man. Everything that's consists of these scriptures is made known unto us. Okay? It's made known unto us, and it's always been that way. The same name that was given to our forefather Moses, man. That was made known. So you are you saying that the most high gave his name to Moses and then Moses went and hid uh, hid the name or uh, came out later and said, you know, that's not that was just the name he gave me for himself at the time. The name of the Moses, it says that the Lord changes not, man. You know, that was his name from the beginning, and that's his name now. And we have the name now. And that name was going to be forever declared, now and forever. And it says that in the book of Psalms, um, roughly paraphrasing, that you're, it is going to be, um, we're going to praise the, the Most High's name from generation to generation. We're going to teach his name unto our children. You know, we're going to teach, um, we have been taught his name by, uh, by the elders and apostles, you know. Why would, you know, hey, this, this, this so, this so much that goes into this, but, um, man, pro prophecies are going on, and those that are not calling upon the name, or, you know, whatever the case may be, man, saying that we don't have the name, whatever, you know, or calling them, whatever you want to call them, the most high, you, you're going to see who the, the true and holy, uh, true and holy power is, man, okay, all of us are going to see it, you know, and those that, um, give credits to the most high's name, you know who, who on whom are of the elect of course will be uh will be granted salvation man you know so with that being said lord willing this is edifying and until the next time shall one